Welcome to the Tweed Heads Bowls Club and to the Australian Indoor Championship. I'm Steve Rebilliard for ABC Sport. Well, on the Australian Bowls calendar, this is undoubtedly one of the standout events. It draws together our best bowlers and over the years, the list of previous winners reads like a who's who of Australian singles players. Today, we have the semi-finals for you and in the first of them, a man who's won it four times, Steve Blasson from New South Wales, also from New South Wales and also a previous winner is Ian Taylor. Let's have a look at how they progressed this far. And Steve Glasson in the first round defeated John Bowman in three sets, dropped a set to Grant Munn from New South Wales, but overcame Bill Cornell's in straight sets. For Ian Taylor, well, his progress was a little tougher. Five sets against George Ferguson of South Australia. He overcame the number one ranked player and defending champion Rex Johnson, four sets. And in the quarters, Ian beat Kyle McElroy of Western Australia. And when I say only the very best players have won this tournament, it's timely to introduce Ian Shubak, who's won it twice himself. And Shui, what's it take to win the Australian Indoor? Well, you've got to be very consistent, Steve. No loose bowls at all. As you mentioned, they've won this event before. Both players, the cream has come to the top. Almost 700 players started out in the qualifying event. Ian Taylor had to win five rounds just to make it here. Well, Ian is uh, a very distinctive uh, style of player and really seems to be uh, re-energised about bowls. Yes, he's almost a professional player. He travels the country playing bowls all the time. He's played about eight years in the World Indoor Championships. He's very experienced. If there's one player in this field that can beat Steve Glasson, it could be Ian Taylor. Let's have a look at the conditions of play. And it's the best of five sets. First to seven shots wins the set. No dead end, so the jack will be respotted on the rink and the players may only visit the head after their second bowl. Two of the real gentlemen of the game involved in this first final. Some pundits around the Tweed Heads Club really feel that the winner out of uh, Steve Glasson and Ian Taylor will go into the final as the favourite. Perhaps this is the stronger of the two semis. And these two men have met many times over the years. The victory's probably fairly evenly shared, even if uh, Ian Ian Taylor... Please, ...in the visor in Half the early years behind, probably Jack had the better of Steve. Thank you. Steve uh, became our number one singles player and uh, would have won most of his encounters after the first uh, half dozen. And then recently, uh, Shuey, you're telling me that really their encounters have been shared. Yes, according to Steve Glasson, uh, not that he really keeps a record, but uh, very consistent players, Ian Taylor and Steve Glasson, very rarely play loose bowl. And the first two signifying that good crowd in at Tweed Heads and Steve Glasson although uh, playing out of St John's Park very much uh, welcome here and um, at this complex very much at home see to number three you see those uh, victories in 94 97 98 99 in the Australian indoor a jack high champion he uh, is still one of the first names pulled out of the hat when Australian teams are chosen. Ian Taylor, well, Australian uh, viewers, as he drives at this head early. And uh, has some impact. Still one, Still, Ron uh, Glass and holding. Ron Orchard uh, is our marker today. Steve Glasson drawn to uh, the, the big St John's Park Club in Sydney. Having been uh, from these parts originally, from Capalabar, was it uh, Shuey? A, long, a fair way back for, for Steve Glasson? Started at Maruka. Uh, Steve has been Taylor, a wonderful performer over many years, has won this event in 1993. Silver medalist in the fours in the Commonwealth Games. Won the prestigious Golden Nugget singles here at Tweed Heads Outdoor. It's won the Australian Indoor singles and the Australian Outdoor singles, Ian Taylor. One of the, perhaps, the most popular player in Australia. And from Port Augusta, you were saying originally, Shui? Took up bowls as a bit of a dare, Steve. Uh, played cricket and uh, football, Aussie rules football in Port Augusta. And uh, about 18 years of age, he took up the game of bowls as a bit of a joke. He's been playing for the last 24 years. Wonderful performer. 
absolute gentleman, as you mentioned, Steve, at the intro. And, uh, well, he's got friends all around the world, wherever Ian Taylor goes. And it's just so popular. Glasson, he knows he's in for a tough game. A lot of bowlers, Steve, might uh, be bewildered with Steve Glasson has changed his bowls for the semi-final. He's been playing with a size 5 heavyweight for the entire tournament. To give you an idea how professional Steve is, he just feels his smaller bowls. Beautiful shot. Bit of a <laughs> Look at this funny grip of Ian Taylor's fingers across the bowl. Most unusual technique in the world. Playing probably one metre of weight, looking to rest one of Glasson's bowls or to trail the jack for two, maybe three. Looks to be wide. So it looks like a, a very good start for Steve Glasson as both players go to the head now to assess. That's two, mate. Two. Steve's asking for two. That's what's conceded. That's what's uh, indicated by Ron Orchard. And a good start. First set, Steve Glasson against Ian Taylor. Pretty good crowd in at the Tweed Heads Club. Wonderful uh, winter's day outside. Or what passes for winter up uh, <laughs> in these parts. This is why it's uh, such a popular place to come in winter for bowlers from the southern states. Make their way up. Southeast Queensland. I think Steve Glasson has made the right choice switching bowls. <laughs> I, that uh, that news that he has changed his bowls for the semi-final sure just prompted in my mind this question: uh, when he plays in internationals on this particular rink, what size bowl is he using against always, you know, Ireland? And always the four heavyweight. Mm -hmm. The last couple of months he's been playing with a size five heavyweight, bigger bowl. He's a big man, Steve Glasson. Enormous hand can handle uh, any size bowl comfortably. Wouldn't be happy with the first bowl. He's on the jack, but he's a perfectionist. He would have preferred the bowl directly behind the jack. Something for Ian Taylor to rest on. Well, that's two now for Steve Glasson. It's. Uh Mathematically possible for him to take the set in this third end. We to uh, grab the maximum count. Ian Taylor must get on the board here. Needs a close bowl, Steve, before trying to convert. His first bowl has been a little bit wayward. That falls against the bias, which it's not. It would have been better for Taylor, but it's actually worse now for Ian Taylor. Steve may play maybe 30 centimetres of weight now. Wouldn't mind springing the jack across to the right-hand side of the line. Be very cautious not to leave his bowl on. That, well, that is absolutely perfect. Exactly where Glasson was playing to. Holding three. Pressure building on Ian Taylor, as we say. Maximum count for Glasson. There goes the first set. Psychologically, Steve, uh, a devastating blow for Ian Taylor. <laughs> Drop four shots on this end, lose the first set in just three ends. There's a big gap. And that looks like second shot. Yes, the count reduced to one now for Glasson. Steve Glasson, he's had a look at the backhand. It's almost impossible to come in here and make contact to force this bowl of Taylor's out. He's probably thinking of the first set, mm. safer option, draw a second, hope that Taylor misses with his last conversion shot. Hasn't made a conversion shot yet, Taylor. <laughs> Glasson was looking for the four, but he's on the forehand, trying to make two. And that looks, well, might only still be one. Ron Orchard only holding up the one disc. And 
Taylor with a problem or two as he goes back to the match. He played more weight. He's missed with two conversion shots. The logical shot is to play a metre of that bowl. If he's a little bit narrow, Steve, could get a lucky result on there. He's probably already looked at this plant coming on to that bowl. To get that shot, he must almost drive. Safer option, one metre of weight, has been missing wide. He's closer this time, he's closer this time. Yo-ho-ho, here -ho -ho, Taylor. Well played. From at least one down to two up. Oh, that's a great conversion from Tails. Look at that. Picks it up uh, pretty cleanly. Trails are through. And Ian Taylor's on the board, and now only trails 3-2 in the first set. Ian Taylor has the mat and he's rolled the jack close to uh, maximum length. He's back in the set too. That's the good news for him, having uh, executed an excellent uh, conversion in that third end. He was looking at four or five nil down, but it's 3-2. And this seems to be a length uh, that he likes, shall we? How far? Thanks, Ron. Normally, it's probably blocked. Glasson's forehand. Yep, That's 11 good... inches. Thank you. 11 inches, we heard Ron Orchard say, short of the jack. Steve may elect to try to just get a close bowl with, on his forehand. If he crashes, that won't be too worried. He'll have a close bowl if he rests on Taylor's nearest bowl, his opening bowl. Yes, Steve, I'm really surprised that um, Ian Taylor, right in the draw, wouldn't you know it? <laughs> 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 now Taylor will switch to the backhand and try and perhaps just touch the jack. Ian Taylor, watch this little wobble on the bowl as it comes out of the hand. The bowl, you'll see the ring wobbling a bit. It's got that little wobble. It and would be very hard to get the bowl away smoothly with the grip that he has, Shui. That, that's kind of side on. Yes, the fingers uh, run underneath, across the bowl, not on the running surface per se. But normally that would suit a longer length because a shorter length, the bowl would wobble nearly all the way down. But we've seen Steve Glasson on this long length of Tweed Heads, 33 metres. He is absolutely deadly. So maybe as the match goes on, if Ian Taylor is trailing, we might see short ends. I well, needed some uh, luck there and it sailed through without any. Ron, the gap between Stevie's front bowl and the jack, please. 14. And is Steve and my bowl touching there? My no. short bowl? Seven inches. Seven Thank inches, you. and look at those two bowls on the left, top left. They look from where Ian Taylor is standing as if they're touching. Always a good idea is to ask the marker. Players are not allowed to come to the head until they've played three bowls. I think Ian Taylor might play safety behind and perhaps follow this bowl to the head. Just get down and have a good look. He may be holding two. Glasson. One to play after this bowl, so he'll be just trying to draw. Trial of the jack would be an absolute bonus. Two oh. down to two up. Well played. It's uh, reminiscent of Taylor's uh, conversion in the third end. Yes, brilliant conversion shot. Tactically... I thought Steve might have just played dead draw weight, but just picking up the jack. Just two down to two up, and Ian Taylor, he's got work to do. Well, it is one of the more unusual actions and grips, Shuey. His fingers right across the bowl. Very unusual, really clawing the bowl, <laughs> wobbling around. <laughs> Comes out with a wobble, but every wobble is identical. That's the secret. <laughs> It's really only the tip of the index finger that is in contact with the bowl. It's not out of any textbook, <laughs> that's for sure. The middle finger, your longest finger, should be on the running surface. 
And, well, Ian Taylor, backhand with weight. Looks to be a really narrow line. You'll need plenty of weight to hold that line. Well, <coughs> Steve Glasson, he's looking at a uh, possible count of three here. Any way he can make more, sure? I don't think so. Three is... Yeah, short ball just in your line, was it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Viewers, Ian Schubeck has written three in his yeah, little scorecard already. <laughs> Sklesson's holding two, but you're confident, Chewy. 6-2 when this bowl comes to rest, Steve. <laughs> Favourite forehand. Safe line. Just trying to beat the wing bowl left of screen. Struggling. Might find the gap. Oh, we did. <laughs> Lucky for Ian Schubeck and, and his lack of white out because he'd have had to adjust his scorecard, but he's found a little hole there and he'll take the three. Steve Glasson, much to Ian Schubeck's relief, and that is 6-2 exactly in the first set. <laughs> a pretty entertaining first set between Steve Glasson and Ian Taylor. Taylor has the map. He has a three-shot deficit to uh, address. Glasson just needs one for the set, remember. And Steve Glasson will have last bowl in with this end. <laughs> Taylor right on it. It's the smallest of contacts. Shake it ahead, though, from Ian Schubeck, no. I can tell you folks. I'm you know, <laughs> quite sure why Tails is bowling Nothing this length. Is that the uh, reason, Chewy? Well, sometimes psychologically, Steve, if you drop a three on a particular length, you like to go back to that same way of going and say, well, I want to prove that I can beat you over this length. <clears throat> Ian Taylor, he's rolled the jack exactly the same length on the previous end in this direction where he lost three shots. So Glasson loves this length. <laughs> Get out of that, Ian Taylor. <laughs> My goodness. Where's Stevie's bowl, please, Ronnie? This is uh, some quality that Back we're seeing bowls, from both Taylor and Glasson. Just past the front of the kitty. Three quarters of a bowl short. Thank you. <laughs> World class. Ian Taylor has a theory uh, when he's behind. He always says, if in doubt, ditch to ditch, meaning longest end possible. Might maybe change that philosophy. Playing somebody like Steve Glasson, Taylor looking for the jack. Oh, he's in the area. He's going to get something. Oh, fall in and uh, you tell me. <laughs> now, right from here, looks like resting touches. Two resting touches. Two resting touches. <laughs> now. There we go. They jammed How's the jack a between them. Jack, then is it Ron? Your bowl? No, Ian's bowl. Sorry. Ian's yeah. bowl's jack. Both high. in contact. Jack I wonder high. which one's touching heavier. <laughs> <laughs> now you better tell me what instrument. How's his other the one out got here? Thanks, mate. The <laughs> emulation of jack high. Full bowl short. Thanks. It's good for Ian Taylor. Um, doesn't matter whether he drops one or four on this end. He needs to win the end. Glasson, he'll try to disturb this, even if he gives the shot away. He's holding half a shot at the moment. But he knows that Taylor will be attacking with his third wood. He has asked permission and also invited Glasson to the head. Both players need to know how much weight to play. Taylor will be playing weight, Steve, on the backhand, looking for Glasson's white disc bowl. At least a metre of weight. He will not want to leave the shot until his last bowl, Taylor. Solid contact. Could make two shots. Could point out for non-bowlers, Shuey, that if they didn't disturb this head, if those two resting touches stayed there, there'd be no score in this end. And uh, that is still on the cards as Taylor files to find the target. Now, Steve Glasson, he won't know what to... Will he take a risk? <laughs> Taylor says, well... How game is my opponent? Maybe he'll give the shot to me. It's just luck, Steve. I think, knowing Steve Glasson, I think he'll play into danger, looking for the blue disc bowl. He could make three shots, only needs one. 
Neither player holding shot at the moment. Both touching Jack. Taylor has another look. Ian Taylor, he could play a great shot here, Steve, and lose the set. The blue disc bowl, he's got to make three shots. Go for that blue disc bowl. Belonging to Glasson. Be brave. Try to play a narrow line, not a wide line. Blue bowl goes out, Taylor scores three. Jack may go with the bowl. That is the problem. Second problem, Glasson has one to play. And he's wide, still. <laughs> well, once those two bowls had come to rest on the jack, we felt in our minds, I think, Shui, that it wouldn't be long before the head was disturbed, but they just haven't been able to find it. Well, both players, Steve, know that if they give the shot away, their opponent can get a boost in confidence and perhaps go on and win the set. And once again, Glasson is narrow, so you, we will have no score here in this <laughs> sixth end. <laughs> Let's hope Ron Orchard, Steve, was correct. In fact, I'm sure both players will have a Start again, eh? quick look. I think they'd already convinced themselves that uh, that was One the each. case. He's having a good <laughs> quick look. <laughs> One each, says Glasson. Yeah. Well, that won't be the case. Dead heat. Yeah. No score there. You don't see that very often. Ian Taylor, still trailing by three. Still he has the mat after that inconclusive sixth end. Unusual here, Taylor playing the forehand in this direction. Steve Glasson. It's just a whisker slower, that forehand. Easy to drop short. Neither player has asked who's holding. Only two bowls delivered so far. No indication yet to either from our Mark or Ron Orchard. Taylor, who's fighting to stay alive in this first set, remember. And does look as though he is holding. Not anymore. Set lie for Glasson. So Ian Taylor delivers on the fifth pump. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't always the case, Shuey. No, he used to just go twice and deliver on the third, but players they just changed their technique over the years, accidentally more often than not. Well, that's a wonderful bowl if it falls back. Taylor, one down to one up. It's we'll a gap there, thanks, Ron. Throw away this Shop first set. Jack. Eight, nine inches. My last bowl, thanks. Gap? Yes, thanks. Eleven? Thanks. Two shots on for Glasson. Forehand, open draw. Probably better to play that now. If he fails, you play weight on the backhand with his last bowl. Has it got enough? Oh, has it? 
as he needed to stand up to stay the shot. He's holding it now. So that bowl looks precariously perched Whoops. and Ron Orchard's watching it. It falls out and now does that change the picture? If he was holding shot, Taylor would play a wide line to there on the forehand. He's looking backhand with weight. That bowl onto the shot bowl, clean out. Might get a lucky result coming on here. Probably play very quick. Could take out Glasson's bowls. Once again, Glasson will have last bowl to play. Always a danger if the jack is sprung into the open. Must attack. Wow. Nerves of steel. How much weight? Plenty. <laughs> and got contact. That's the problem. He and Taylor were probably... <laughs> now that white line isn't the out-of-bounds so line, is it? It's uh, below yeah, it. I assume the it's pegs pretty are close right. to. Are they in line, Paul? Look now, just seeing whether the... It's a good result, uh, Taylor. It's a on solid the... strike. What do you reckon, Taylor? Won't make any difference to Glasson. Yeah, if the line's are right, I don't think it's in, eh? You're right, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I'm it not is sure in. that they are. And do you know if the lines are outside the... the pegs, are they? The yellow peg on the bank is not necessarily 100% in line I think it's in, but with the centre line of other rinks. Now, what's your view well, there, Shui? Well, Steve Glasson has just said I, to I, Ian... I reckon it's in. I think it's in, yeah. Yep. And Ian Taylor will accept Steve's eye. He's got a great eye. You can see that it won't make much difference to the result. This will be the first set to Glasson. Has two metres of room. So Glasson just needs to come back in bounds. Might even uh, trail the jack to do so. <laughs> the cheek of him. And he picks up the first set. Uh, an eventful one. It seemed to have everything. It certainly had high quality bowls. And 7-3, the first set to Steve Glasson. And to join Ian Schubach in the second. It'll be Steve Boylan as we just see confirmation again. The, an applause from Ian Taylor as he concedes that first set. Ian Taylor starting off the second set. Just a marvellous performance by both players in the opening set. Glasson, of course, winning that. 7 3. That's a good start. Where this game's going, Shuey, you'd want to get a lot closer than that. <laughs> Quality bowls, the first set, and we'll probably see better quality to come too, Steve. I'm sure this large crowd of tweed heads would like to see this match go five sets. Ian Taylor, he believes he's got the only one in the world with the correct technique. Everybody else is wrong. <laughs> I admire your sense of humour, shall we? Oh, he says that publicly, Ian Taylor. <laughs> Tongue in cheek. It's working. He'd be absolutely furious with that bowl, Steve. Perfect weight. Just finishing across the line. Slight gap. cannot allow a jack high bowl against a world-class player like Steve Glasson. Well, Glasson was playing weight for the jack or the bowl. Ian Taylor. He'll try and touch the jack this time. Tidy the head up. Been a very sound player. Ian Taylor over a number of years. I think his last international representation, Shuey, would have been the World Bowls in 96 in Adelaide, I think. Oh, so unlucky. Needed an ounce more weight. Spectators are clapping. Ian Taylor will be feeling sick. He's holding three. Oh, tails back bowl, but it's, uh, it's not a safe bowl, three. Jack, thanks, Tried to trail the jack out of sight. 15. Broadened the 15. target. Ian Taylor, Steve. My last bowl. How far through was that, mate? Thanks. 
25. Thanks. Represented Australia from 1991 to 1996. He's winning a bronze medal in Adelaide, 96. He's played exactly. Oh, Glasson, juicy target. And he's missed. Ian Taylor. <laughs> shock. <laughs> Sounded like shock from Ian Shoeback. Wow. Yeah. Taylor says he cannot believe his luck. What does he do now? He doesn't know what to play. He knows Glasson will be attacking. A lot of players would come around here, go behind. I think Ian Taylor must try to consolidate. Trail the jack, out of sight, for four. Glasson's just missed one drive. Rarely see Steve Glasson miss two in a row. Taylor put that jack out of sight. He's probably saying to himself... The faint heart never won a fair maiden, they say, Shiri, don't they? Well, Steve... Take the punt, go for four. Perhaps against you, you'd leave that head and go behind, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I you've wonder, seen me play. I wonder if he's trying to draw a shot and a block. Brave attempt. It does not count, but it has blocked the drive. A good bowl or a bad bowl, you might ask. Well, probably, probably a bit of both. Sometimes, Steve, it can fo force your opponent to chain shots. Glasson cannot come up the line. He'll play controlled weight. What a turnaround if he came up here and swallowed the jack a metre. Three down to three up. Probably Taylor. one of the hardest shots in the book, I'd say, shall we? This little overweighted shot. It's more difficult than the drive, put it that way, Steve. Glasson's probably good enough to draw the shot. Taylor's happy. Three. Oh, Glasson wide. And that is a Three. fantastic Three. start for Ian Taylor after dropping the first set. Pick up three out of a maximum of a four. Great effort. 3 0 in the second. Very interested crowd here today. Some may be saying that if you give Ian Taylor five start in a set, good luck. And that's where he is at the moment. Just needs two to square it up at one set all. And quite a bit the weight that time. There. Thanks, Ron. Good news, Steve. Was Ian, Ian Taylor he knew he was Thanks. heavy. As soon as the bowl came out of his hand, he clenched the fist and knew that he missed the weight. There's nothing worse than playing the weight you're trying and have with the way the bowl comes out of the hand and then finish two metres away from the jack. Taylor knew he had erred as soon as the bowl was delivered. It's a one. Right on. Any gap, Ron, please? Oh, three sixteenths of an inch. <laughs> so. Oh, that's good. It's all right. I've got room, he said. <laughs> Taylor would have drawn shots many times throughout his career in this situation. The secret is not to try to draw the shot. You just try to get close. And if you accidentally draw the shot, you're experienced enough to just keep the surprised look off your face. <laughs> no smiles just yet. That one's short. Tails last ball, thanks, Ron. Between yours and his? No, just the gap from his to the jack, thanks. It's now 15 inches. Thank you. Oh, the ball must have fallen over, Ron. It did. Was, was hesitating. The players like a quick answer, but Ron Taylor, hesit Ron Orchard, our marker, hesitating, just waiting for Taylor's bowl to fall over. Close. Not hard to get mixed up, sure, is it? We've got uh, Ian Taylor, Ron Orchard, and their statistician is Ron Taylor. <laughs> so, I mean, we've got a nice mix. Taylor now, as you mentioned, just try and get close is probably the objective. We'd be happy to go one down on this end. Hard for Taylor to get the shot. Must be careful not to drop more than one. This is good. 
Oh, my last one, thanks, mate. The gap? Yes, thanks, yep. 14 inches. Thank you. Interesting that, uh, I was just going to comment on that, about the questions that the players do ask, you know, you know Mark or Ron Orchard, but the, the questions at times, I mean, asking a question 14 inches and then the next bowl 16 inches or whatever, it always, um, I suppose, intrigues me as we watch Glasson make the perfect correction. Brilliant stuff. It always intrigues me, shall we? I mean, um, can you, as we watch this other counter from Glasson coming to the head, we look at the effective rate, 75%. That would be expected from both players, given the fact they're playing with four bowls. You would have to play at least 75% effective to to win in this company, maybe even a little bit higher. Ian Taylor will try delicate weight to split the two blue bowls. It's really just a draw shot. He won't like going two down. Yeah. Well, make some sort of a conversion here, shall we? I mean, he's only two away from the set, isn't he? We've got to remember that. But this is on its way, and it's not short. Thump. It's very, you never underestimate Glass, and I think that's the, the, the call. Steve would have seen the shot and he will play it. Just delicate weight. Too delicate. Two, two, three. You'll grab two though. Two, and Glasson is on the board in the second. Five, two. And Ian Taylor leads. Five all in the second set. Glasson taking the first, 7-3. Tell us about this one, shall we? And I'll let uh, Steve Rebilliard join you in commentary. Well, both players be aware how important this second set is. Steve Glasson knows that if he could draw two shots on this end, he'd be in a very strong position. Ian Taylor knows that if he could draw two shots, all the pressure is thrust upon Steve Glasson. Glasson would not be happy with his opening bowl. Ian Taylor, he's dropped three short bowls on the previous end. And just over one metre short with his opening bowl. So he's been in a position of 5 nil up in the second set, shall we? So Ian Taylor will uh, be... Unhappy if he doesn't level it. I think it's coming back or about to come back to haunt him. That fact, Steve. He let five nil, looking good. Three and a two on the first two ends of this second set. And all of a sudden, he well, that is a set lie to Glasson. And there'd be absolutely no stopping. As good as what Ian Taylor is, there'd be no stopping Steve Glasson in, the, in this match if he were to get this second set. It's a long way back, two sets to nil down. Taylor knows it. That's added pressure. Must miss his first bowl. Mm -mm -mm. Momentum is very much with Glasson. He's won the last four ends. He's got a beautiful two as well, Steve. The forehand looks pretty blocked. The backhand is also blocked. He has a counter glass in the blue disc bowl on the left. Does not want to remove that bowl. Or maybe that's forced Taylor's hand. <laughs> One to play. He's playing the difficult weight. His backhand swings a little bit. If he's under the line, Will it hold that line? Need some luck. Oh, didn't really have much. That's not bad, Steve. You can see the jack. Full-blooded drive. Could take, could take two out with his last bowl. Narrow, lucky feather. Opened the head up. Still three down. 
<laughs> what does he do, Steve? He might finish there, block the full-blooded drive, or maybe come right around there at the back. Two choices. He will not go near the head. He knows Taylor will be driving. Maybe I have to draw a fourth. Probably only take one or two out. Well, he had another think about it at the mat end. Or perhaps he was just visualising the shot he requires. He knows Taylor will be driving. Could well be four shots. Only needs two. Taylor's not sure. But one thing he's sure about, he will not be short. Full-blooded drive, straight up the line, hoping for the jack, or at least three bowls out. On its way. Oh, that looks like the two that uh, Steve Glasson needs for the second set. He took two out, but not uh, the two that were closest. And two to have it. Steve Glasson and 7-5, the second set. And he looks to be on his way. Looking uh, a little anxious, Steve Glasson. Well, he was hot, wasn't he? Mm. It's a good sign from a player. You know, if you let the bowl go, if you know where the bowl is going to finish after it's just immediately left your hand, it's a good sign you're in good touch. Very tense look from Taylor. He must get that jack shorter. Match is all but gone now, but Steve Glasson is just outdrawn Ian Taylor on the longer lengths have not had one short end in the match, have not even played a medium length end. Under Australian rules, 21 metres is the minimum length. The shortest we've played is about 29. Taylor must go short. Before he can do that, he must win the end. Started at the Railway Bowling Club in Port Augusta. Ian Taylor. And as long as you've known him, sure, he's always had that action or a, uh, a, a form of it? Yeah, it's changed a little bit over the years. Basically, he used to have a couple of pumps and then let the bowl go away. And over the years, he's added a few little extra wiggles on the backswing. <laughs> Wonderful correction, Ian Taylor. Any gap there, Ron? Thanks. Yes. Four. And mine, please. Now the effective rate. Steve Glasson, 81%. Thanks. Geez, played some good bowls. Both have improved. We're 75% each. So. Glasson. One down. Could absolutely destroy Ian Taylor's confidence if he could draw this shot. He's done it. <laughs> well, Steve Glasson uh, stands as a monument to consistency. Yes. All the matches we've seen him play on television in the last few years, Shuey, it's, gee, it's hard to remember a poor match from him. He, he's lost a, a few, but he's never played very badly. And right now, he's playing wonderfully well. And from the mat, Steve, he could not even see the shot bowl or the jack. Steve Glasson. He knew his opening bowl was about 18 inches or so short. Brilliant correction. Taylor, whisker short once again. Steve Glasson needs another five shots to secure the match. And a little snap of the fingers, as we've noted, generally means it's come out a bit hot, might have too much on it. And that is the case. Not by much, though. He's a pretty good judge. <laughs> he needs this conversion shot just to restore his confidence. Half a metre of running, looking for the jack. Are we playing for right right. 
It's one down. Needs to turn, do the right thing. It won't, and it's another one to Glasson. Oh, he's got almost a vice-like grip on this match now, and perhaps a place in the final, Steve Glasson. 3-0 in the third set, having taken the first two. Well, the crowd enjoying the performance of uh, Steve Glasson, who I'm sure they view as very much their own man, but they also warm to Ian Taylor. Such a great bowler for... Australia here and away and really coming back to top bowls after a year or two it wasn't uh, the results really weren't coming but he's really struggling to run with Glasson today and there's no sign of shortening the length of end played by Glasson as long as he keeps the mat we almost maximum length there shoey Yes, and I'm sure that even Steve Glasson uh, has probably wondered why his opponent has not rolled the jack short in the entire match. As you mentioned, there's almost a vice-like grip on the match now. It's almost too late to change tactics. Of course, the game is never over. But, uh, Steve Glasson, he'll play these maximum 33-metre length ends all day long. Ooh, no luck there. Had a bit of weight on there, Shuey. Well, it's fair to say that uh, Steve Glasson, whilst he's leading two sets to love, Steve, he really hasn't played at his best. He's played some superb shots. He's just played a few loose bowls. He's just came, just uh, a week or so ago, played an interstate game. He's come down from Bribie Island, uh, New South Wales, he was playing for, and against Queensland and on the outdoor greens. and Takes couple of days to adjust to the indoor carpet. Ian it's Taylor. From shop he, to Jack there. Thanks, Ron. He's a veteran on the carpet. He's been to eight world Nine, indoor championships. Ten. Ian Taylor one year played with Steve Glasson from memory in the world indoor pairs. I think they may have got to a quarter final. also <coughs> made the quarter-final, Ian Taylor, of the World Indoor Singles. <coughs> better than that. One, two, mate. One. One, two, three, four, a bit of a wobble. <laughs> 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 Amazing the players around the world, even if they don't know Ian Taylor's name, they say, oh, that Australian player with a real funny delivery. <laughs> Self-taught Ian Taylor from Port Augusta. Well, no coach you don't have to say that he taught him that. <laughs> but, again, it is effective this time for Ian Taylor, although out of his hand you'd have thought from his reaction that it wasn't what he wanted. Well, it's not what he wants, Steve. It's jack high, almost jack high. In, look at that bowl, bottom right of screen. That's where Glasson will want the Work jack. <laughs> May even have a full-blooded drive. Just depends how his state of mind is. It's three shots on. Drive for the jack. Going quick for the jack. Into the ditch. Mm, now, what's that left the state of play? That's close for shot. Trail of the jack would be at least two shots. Bowl is the bigger target. So Ian Taylor just over draw weight. Trying to sit the blue disc bowl coming into view now. Rest that bowl down. Close. He's got three shots. Close. It's got some work to do. It's trying. And maybe two. I might need some help here. The finger method is only effective up to a point. Two. No, no help required. Two conceded by Glasson. And in the third set now, it's Glasson leading 3-2. Well, Ian Taylor has uh, dragged it back to 3-2 in the third set. But despite uh, 
invitation in the commentary box to <laughs> shorten the length. <laughs> He's saying, no, that, that's shoe bag, that uh, rebellion, uh, boil, and they don't know what they're talking about. I'm sticking with what I know and like. It's, it is uh, quite often the case, Stephen. I'm not suggesting this for Ian Taylor. It really is a personal friend of mine, Tails. But when you're the heat of the moment, sometimes you just don't think as clearly as if it's, as most bowlers will tell you, it's very easy from the bank or the commentary box to suggest what you should and should not do in a match. But in the heat of the moment, Ian Taylor's probably saying, well, I'm going to get on top of glass and if it kills me over these long length jacks. And he, well, he's been killed on them and that's the, the harsh fact. He had the choice of the length, what to roll. He's rolled 32 metres. And he's been outdrawn with his first bowl once again. And that sets the pattern for the whole end. He's always trying to retrieve. That's more pressure. Start of the third set looks rather like the start of the first. A double and a single for Glasson. And two from Ian Taylor. That's how the first and third sets have begun. Glasson went on to win that first set. 7-3. Well, maybe that's a juicy target for Ian Taylor. Biggest mistake inexperienced bowlers make is they try to convert the head when they're down too early. Very important to get close bowls first. Unusual grip from Ian Taylor. Comes out with a little bit of a wobble every time, but very consistent. Wisely saving the conversion shot until his last bowl, if in fact he fails here. Well, not only has he failed, he's blocked the drive, he's dropped short. As word, that's a wonderful bowl if Steve Glasson put it there, but Ian <laughs> Taylor will not be happy with that. Well, right on the centre line, it's really shut down an option for him. And uh, Glasson, Steve, he'll go for the jugular. He'll want four shots this end, straight through to the final. There's three. Well, not much applause. I think most of the spectators have got bruised palms. <laughs> it's uh, monotonous. Steve Glasson. So if Steve Glasson goes for the jugular, is Ian Taylor bowling in vain? But you're going to touch that kitty over for me. <laughs> That's what I was getting worried about. <laughs> well, I can tell you what, he'll, be, he'll need some luck on this bowl, Steve. I'm not sure what he'll play after that disastrous attempt to draw. He's really tactically should perhaps switch to the backhand and draw the shot. He's persisting on the forehand. He only has just over 30 centimetres or just over a foot to cut any of the counters out. If he fails, Glasson will be drawing for the match. It's not going to do it. Well, no hesitation from Glasson. He knows what's required. What a position he's in. This is game. So Glasson holding three. One more. Hey, keeping and this will be the final bowl, not just of this end, but of the match, if he can draw a fourth. Oh. No reason, Steve, to suggest that Glasson will fail. Steve's just drawn three perfect bowls, just to repeat. Wonderful performance. That's a lot easier to say it than to do it. Let's see if Steve can live up to his wonderful reputation on this rink. It looks like he has. That's the four he needed. Wonderful semi-final performance from Steve Glasson. A straight sets winner over Ian Taylor. 7-3, 7-5, 7-2. Into the final goes Steve Glasson. Well done, Steve. It's pretty much a workmanlike performance. Well, I think that's what it's got to be in here. You know, it's hard work. Uh, Tails is a great opposition. We've had some great games in the past, and you've really got to knuckle down and, and uh, try and give it 110%, and unfortunately today it came off. So what goes through your mind when you're 5-0 down in the second? 
Well, you know, against tails, you nearly write yourself off. I think, you know, you. you uh, I think you tend to relax a little bit more. You know, when it's two all and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, it's only one set, but when it's five nil down, you're thinking, well, you know, I can afford to go for broke a little bit here and, and try a few things and a um, couple of lucky results here and there and a few, you know, a few bowls reasonably close and got out of it. So it was a bonus really to get out of that one. Ray Glasser, Anthony Keepy, uh, the other semi-final, um, it's going to be tough no matter who wins. Oh, I just hope they wear each other out, you know, and uh, might be up for the final then I hope, but it uh, should be a great match. Good luck. Thanks, Boyle. What a wonderful performance from Steve Glasson. He now has the chance to win this title for the fifth time in eight years, and I'm sure he'll be watching the second semi-final to check out his...